Well, I'm Michael Horowitz. I'm an endocrinologist from Adelaide. I'm director of the endocrine unit at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. I'm employed by the University of Adelaide as well. And uh, what I've been doing for the last 35 years or so, I've been conducting research relating to the relevance of the stomach to diabetes, which many of my colleagues regard as an ill-considered choice. But nevertheless, uh, it's been important. There are really two aspects for this. The first was the recognition that people with long-standing type 1 or type 2 diabetes associated with complications, poorly controlled diabetes, as was usual in the past, many of these people have abnormally delayed stomach empty. And so with a prevalence of 40 or 50 percent, so extremely common, and we were only able to demonstrate that by the application of new techniques to measure gastric emptying, particularly the use of isotopes added to meals and a gamma camera, so-called scintigraphy, to quantify gastric emptying. So that became, instead of a rare disorder, a common disorder. And it was a disorder associated with symptoms, nausea, vomiting, fullness after meals, which could drastically impact on quality of life. And a number of treatments were developed, particularly ones which would accelerate the rate of gastric emptying to improve symptoms. So it was the recognition that disordered gastric emptying, delayed gastric emptying, was a very, very common complication of long-standing diabetes. So that was really part one of my career. And part two has focused much more on the recognition that the rate of gastric emptying is a major determinant of the rise in blood glucose after a meal. And that's of critical importance because as glycemic control improves in diabetes, as assessed by glycated haemoglobin, when it gets less than about 8%, so control is reasonable, but certainly less than optimal, the rise in blood glucose after the meal, rather than the blood glucose before a meal, is the major determinant of the glycated haemoglobin. And you can't achieve a normal glycated haemoglobin without normalising postprandial glycemic excursions. So in health, there's about a four times variation in the rate of gastric emptying. And if you're a healthy person, and your gastric emptying is relatively faster, your rise in blood glucose after carbohydrate is substantially greater. And in people with diabetes now, if they're well controlled, as a group in type 2 diabetes, they tend to have normal or even slightly accelerated gastric emptying. So the opposite that occurs in long-standing complicated diabetes. So this has been a very important recognition and it's been translated to the development of therapies, and the therapies can be dietary or pharmacologic, which can be designed to reduce postprandial glycemic excursions by slowing gastric emptying. And as I said, these can be dietary or pharmacological, and the best known pharmacological one are so-called short-acting GLP-1 agonists. So we've seen the evolution of a story over 30 years or so, and that has been stimulated by technical development and has ended up in clinical translation, which has been very rewarding.